Oh yeah. Two. Two fifty. Three. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 88. 88. All right, you guys might recall a video we did not too long ago on our BCM special purpose rifle uh, that we put together with some of our uh, favorite specs that we like to see on a uh, you know longer barreled AR or you know more of a DMR style uh, AR. We thought it would be cool to do uh, sort of a budget inspired uh, Mark 12 build. Uh, this particular one utilizes a Palmetto State Armory 18-inch uh, fluted stainless steel barrel. We have a set of Ultradyne backup iron sights with the really, really effective Ultradyne uh, Dynacomp, I believe they call it. And it is a ridiculously effective muzzle brake. That It's ridiculously loud, but it's very, very effective. Almost no felt recoil. This particular upper uses a side charging handle, which is kind of cool. All right, on the lower, we're just running a little Anderson uh, Poverty Pony, if you will, with a standard A2 mil spec stock. Uh, standard A2 grip. We do have a Geisley SSA trigger uh, in this particular gun, a two-stage. So we did upgrade to a Geisley trigger, but sorry, I'm selfish there. I like to have a nice, uh, a nice Geisley. Um, I feel like that's a pretty crucial component to any rifle build is a good quality trigger, and we love Geisley triggers. A very effective M-lock rail that's very simple but does the job. And you know, this particular gun, unlike the BCM that we did in, the, in one of the other videos, um, this one can be had for a heck of a lot less money. Uh, probably this whole rig could be built out for roughly the cost of a standard Mark 12 upper from just about any reputable manufacturer. Um, I love the BCM stuff. Um, you do get what you pay for in terms of you know, the quality components that they're using, but there's no reason that these guns can't deliver the goods either. Uh, the optic that we're running on this particular gun is also not a super expensive optic. Uh, they're like usually south of 300 bucks. These are some new offerings from Crimson Trace. Uh, this particular one is their Hardline series of optics, and this is a 3 to 9 by, I believe, a 40 uh, millimeter bell on this one, one inch tube. Uh, so basic uh, type of BDC reticle in it uh, that's very simple, and it's set up for 223 slash 556. Uh, this one is sitting in a Wheeler one-piece mount. And one thing about these optics, too, that's really nice that I like is they're very lightweight. You know, this rifle, you would think it would weigh a lot because it's got the 18-inch barrel and the full-length A2 stock. And a lot of people associate an A2 stock with being cumbersome and big and heavy and everything like that. But with the fluting that they did on this particular barrel, you still get some rigidity in the barrel and uh, that you would expect out of a, a larger diameter uh, barrel but the fluting helps cut a lot of the weight out of there. So it actually handles and feels, you know, a lot more like a standard 16 inch gun would, uh, would be, but you get that extra bit of barrel length, uh, which of course gives you some flexibility, a little bit better velocity, better accuracy and things like that. Uh, that was just a few rounds there in the intro. We're running some 69 grain federal gold metal match ammunition. Go ahead and shoot the gun a little bit more. Inside of 300, this thing is pretty much child's play. Um, obviously the BCM rig that we did the other video on was wearing a suppressor and we had some other fancy enhancements and things like that that we added. Um, this one pretty much keeps it relatively basic other than the trigger upgrade. Uh, and the Ultradyne sights, I don't know if you uh, remember or not, but we did a video on the Ultradyne sights in a, in a separate video uh, with this particular rifle. So these irons are actually really nice. They're uh, diopters and and they flip uh, up out of the way so they can work like a backup sight. And the Ultradynes are basically like a really, really fancy high-end uh, backup sight, but not only to be treated as a backup sight, they can be used as a main battle sight uh, and can totally do the job. And of course, their brakes are exceptional. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go with the sights. You can, you can use their muzzle devices as well if you want uh, without the sights. Uh, but the muzzle device and sight assembly is sort of uh, uh, meant to go together uh, in harmony, you know, because of the way it indexes and everything. All right, nice little M-lock rail on there. 
All right, we've got some 20 round P mags. Take a few shots here, 69 grain match ammo. I do like the side charging upper. It is uh, something that's kind of different. Very, very cool. These do suppress well, which of course we're not suppressing right this moment. Uh, but one benefit of having the side charging upper, obviously, is if you do choose to suppress this rifle, um, you're gonna get a lot less gas blowback in your face. If you are dealing with a can that has a lot of blowback and a lot of excess gas in the system, the whole idea of a side charger is supposed to suppress a little bit better and not put so much of those gases back in your face. But running this thing loud, oh yeah, let's have some fun. Okay, uh, the BDC that we have here is very, very simple. You know, each stadia is set up for a certain distance. I'm gonna use the 300 uh, yard hold in here, which is gonna put us at about a mil is what we're looking at, okay. Okay, gotcha. Oh yeah, all right, eight inch popper. Gopher. You're favoring just left, the wind's catching you just time. Just behind his back. There you go. Oh wow, wind did pick up. All right. Coyote. Just low. Back. Nice. That Geisley trigger definitely makes a huge difference. And this optic is very usable. I mean, for being an optic that is in that kind of price range, it puts it kind of like right into the same type of scenario that you would expect like a primary arms uh, with ACSS reticles. You know, we've done videos on those before. Um, I feel like this optic is set up really nice. Okay. And these side charge uppers work really well. Um, I know some people have negative connotations when it comes to Palmetto stuff. And um, I've never really had a major issue out of these uppers uh, or really much of their stuff at all, right? But I think it just all has to do with um, the type of use that you're expecting the gun to hold up to and you know what kind of uh, accuracy expectations you have. I mean, you know, there is a series of diminishing returns when it comes to the amount of money that you spend on something versus what you get. I mean, I think when you start looking at the BCM versus something like this, I mean, the BCM is a, I mean, to be fair, you're talking a $450 barrel. You know, if you order that 18 inch uh, SS410 uh, from BCM, I mean, you're, you're getting into a, a barrel that costs as much as a whole gun from some manufacturers, right? So you have to ask like, well, what are you really getting at when you're buying a $450 barrel versus an upper that where the whole upper might be 700 bucks. And I think that barrel is part of sort of the chain of rifle accuracy comes from the quality of that barrel. I mean, the barrel is the last thing the projectile touches before it leaves the gun. So without a good barrel, you don't have a rifle, right? I mean, that is the heart of accuracy of any rifle is gonna be the quality of the barrel that you're using. So when you start getting into a lesser expensive option, you're generally gonna be getting into a little bit poorer quality barrel, which I hate to say poorer, but it's just that the really good ones are so good that they're just insane how good they shoot, right? Um, you know, this gun, despite having the uh, fluted barrel, does help cut down on the weight. Uh, we still have a nice rigid system. Shooting pretty good. Um, it, it's not shooting as good as the BCM was earlier, but to be fair, um, you know, it's not a lot of money. I mean, this, this rifle total with the optic and uh, everything now, if you don't count the, uh, the, the Paradigm sights, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty pricey upgrade. If you just were to run a mil spec trigger and no backup sights and just run this setup as it sits. Now I can't speculate for this market the way things are, but 
you could probably build one of these out for probably south of a grand, which for an SPR is not bad considering that some uh, companies are going to sell, you know, just the upper alone for probably 14, 1500 bucks. And then you still got to spec out a lower, put an optic on it, that sort of thing. So I, a budget is really like a, a, a loose terminology when it comes to this setup. It, it's not a cheap gun, no matter how far down that totem pole you get in terms of quality of components. It's just, it, it is the most affordable way to get into a rifle like this is to go with like a Palmetto or something like that. And it's shooting quite well. Um, I mean, I don't think you're gonna go out and win a rifle match with it, but you certainly um, can get the job done on critters and uh, you know, shooting all kind of animals at longer range if you need to, um, so, or for hunting purposes, or just to go out and, and just have a great accurate rifle to go have some fun with. It certainly serves you in that capacity. All right, I've got uh, 20 more rounds here. Let's have some fun. Those 69s are hitting pretty hard down range there. Looking good. All right, let's have some fun here. Not bad at all, that last group there on the uh, half size D28, only about three and a half inches or so, the size of a fist, not too bad. I mean, when you look at a special purpose rifle and what a gun like this is kind of set up to do, and especially when you look at the term SPR from just the military standpoint and what their intended purpose of it is, if you were to go out on a military qualification table and especially the old school style. I don't know what they're doing now, but like, you know, a 40 out of 40, and you've got targets out to 300 with Fast Freddy popping up at, you know, 25, 50 meters or whatever in front of you. You could go out and shoot a military qualification table with this setup. Instinctively, and with very little time behind this gun, you could go out and shoot 40 out of 40 on any military qualification table, no problem at all. And you'd be vastly better equipped than just running standard irons. I mean, a person could get behind this gun and quickly and easily with very little time and effort uh, get good and proficient behind something like this and not for a lot of money. So in this market, I know it can be tough to get into uh, an accurized AR or something that one would consider maybe a bit of an upgraded AR in terms of uh, you know having better capabilities at longer range. Um, and I know in this, in this environment, it can be hard to get into something like that. But this should give you an idea. If you watch the BCM video and see how that rifle performed, and then watch this one, this should give you an idea between like sort of entry level and then up into kind of the upper level where you're starting to add, you know, all kind of Geisley components and you're adding, you know, bomb proof gas blocks and you're putting a suppressor on there and a fancy mount and a really, you know, good optic. Not to say this isn't a good optic, but I mean, the, the LRPs that we put on the BCM I mean, you're talking an optic that costs uh, over three times as much as this optic. So it's like, again, you have to ask, well, where's that money really going, right? Well, yeah, like on the Leopolds, you're probably getting into more expensive coatings, more extensive and expensive testing. You know, they use this crazy thing to test, uh, you know, do recoil tests on the, on the optics and everything. And so there's a lot of that. And of course, you know, Leopold optics are US made, so there's always gonna be that factor. Uh, these little crimson traces, they're made in the Philippines, uh, but very, very high quality. And one thing I love, again, yet about this optic is the lightweight. It's the perfect optic for this rig because with the fluted barrel and in combination with the lightweight mount and optic, it keeps the, the rifle very handy. And I think that there's something to be said about something in this price range that can accomplish that, and especially by keeping the weight down. Um, so you kind of get into some territory there that I think is worth noting, okay? 
Uh, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. I always love uh, the opportunity to take some ARs out in the long range. These things are just so fun. And honestly, 300 is kind of child's play for both the other BCM and from the other video and this one. Um, but you could totally shoot this gun uh, out to five or six, no problem. Uh, the BDC on this optic uh, actually goes out to six. So you could totally, uh, you know, get out in some longer range territory with this thing, no problem. Uh, maybe that's something we can try later. Uh, guys, have a great day. We appreciate you watching. I uh, want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans. Uh, if you get t-shirts over on uh, Ballistic Inc., those are mo the uh, most direct ways that you can support us if you wish. So have a great day. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way. See you.